My name is Jeff Jewell and I'm the owner of a company called Jewell Tidegates. This is a video presentation about a project involving a tidegate located in a vault on the outlet for a five acre tidal lagoon at Port Stanley. Port Stanley is located at the northeast corner of Lopez Island in Washington State. In the 1960s tidal flow was cut off from the natural tidal lagoon by the installation of a flap gate in a vault on the outlet which connects the Port Stanley Lagoon to Puget Sound. The original flap gate was installed to prevent occasional extreme high tides from overfilling the lagoon and flooding the property surrounding the lagoon. Unfortunately, the flap gate also prevented routine tides from filling and draining the lagoon. In the absence of tidal flushing, the lagoon became a stagnant, dead cesspool, as can be seen in this photo. This photo shows the man-made ditch that connects the lagoon to a 30-inch diameter culvert that passes under the road, through a vault, and discharges on the beach to the north. This photo shows the beach to the north of the lagoon. A small stream of water draining from the lagoon can be seen in the photo. In 2006, the existing top hinge flap gate was removed and replaced with a side hinge flap gate that was supposed to allow limited tidal flushing. I was not involved in this project, however, the replacement side hinge flap gate was a copy of the tide gate that I designed and installed in Aberdeen back in 1996. From what I can gather, the new Port Stanley tide gate never really worked right. In August of 2008, I volunteered to assist with troubleshooting the tide gate. However, we were unable to get the gate to work properly. Eventually, I gave up on the hydraulic controls and experimented with a mechanism that I had been thinking about for months. I disconnected the hydraulic cylinder, and after a few hours of work, I had the tide gate rigged and ready to test. The rigging consists of a sheave on the crank arm, a pulley in the corner of the vault, a jam cleat, and what I refer to as a tension regulator. The tension regulator increases the tension in the rigging as the gate closes and prevents the gate from slamming shut. Increasing the tension in the rigging of the open gate causes the gate to stay open longer during a rising tide. Reducing the tension in the rigging allows the gate to close sooner. This is video showing water flowing from the sound through the vault and into the lagoon during a rising tide. Note that the outfall culvert is flowing half full at this time. About 30 minutes later, the water level in the vault has only risen by about an inch, but the flow rate has noticeably increased. This is due to the fact that the storage volume in the lagoon associated with one inch of water level rise increases dramatically as the water level in the lagoon rises. The tidal water level is rising faster than the water level in the lagoon. The magnitude of the flow at the head vault is very impressive. There is obviously a substantial amount of water passing through the vault. Later still, the flow velocity seen in the vault is even higher. The draft force acting on the gate at this point is substantial due to the flow velocity as well as to the amount of the gate that is submerged. Not long after this video was shot, the drag force was sufficient to cause the gate to begin to close. The closing of the gate was very interesting and was surprisingly complex. The gate closed a bit and then stopped moving. Since the flow through the vault was partially choked off by the gate, the momentum of water in the pipes upstream and downstream from the vault resulted in, in an interesting dynamic. The water level in the vault rose a bit, and the water level immediately behind the gate dropped slightly. This caused the differential head acting on the open gate leaf to increase. The increasing differential head caused the gate to close a bit further. The additional reduction to the flow through the vault caused even more differential head. A feedback loop of sorts played out and the gate closed gradually in increments spanning about three minutes. The remaining momentum of the water in the outfall caused an upwelling in the vault when the gate closed completely. The water level in the vault rose and then fell a distance that was on the order of about one to two feet above the still water level. There were a number of cycles as the surge dissipated. I was deeply disappointed that I didn't catch this on video. It was very interesting. Fortunately, I was successful in catching the gate on film when it opened several hours later during the falling tide when the water levels upstream and downstream from the gate were roughly equal. The tension in the rigging pulled the gate fully open. The sound of the gate opening was very unexpected. I thought that a military jet was making a low pass when the gate opened. The small differential head initially caused some backflow into the lagoon. The tide was falling and after a few minutes the water levels were equal and the flow stopped. After about 15 minutes of no flow, the flow gradually began slowly flowing through the vault away from the lagoon. The nature of the flow when the gate first pops open is very relevant for fish passage. The fully open gate produces very low flow velocities in the upstream direction, followed by a brief period of still water, which is then followed by low velocity in the downstream direction. This long period of low, very low flow velocity allows fish to freely move into or out of the lagoon at will. No ether, SRT operates like this. If the operation of the tide gate wasn't interesting enough, the biological changes in the lagoon were spectacular. After just a few weeks, the mats of floating and rotting algae and seaweed were noticeably decreased, and a few waterfowl were noted. By November 24th, the lagoon was nearly devoid of seaweed as seen from this aerial photo. A mere 10 weeks later, after the retrofit was completed, the lagoon was teeming with life. There were hundreds of birds and thousands of small fishes in the lagoon. 
The San Juan County Department of Public Works reports that the tide gate reliably closes without allowing excessive amounts of seawater into the lagoon. With daily tidal flushing, the outfall pipe no longer fills with sand during the summer. In addition, during high runoff events, the wide open flap gate passes water with considerably less head loss compared to the old heavy top hinge flap gate. A rejuvenated tidal lagoon, protection from tidal flooding, greater water conveyance through the vault during high flow events, everyone wins. <laughs>